I think you have to become aware of that the way you manage your company will be affected by digital transformation. Well, Rene, welcome back for the second part in our four-part interview. Last time we looked at digital transformation and what it is. This time we're going to look at how you can start and, and how to use it most effectively. First off, how are you? I'm fine, fine. Wonderful. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah, so let's, let's start off. Can you tell us more about this, the digital transformation framework? The last uh, session uh, we discussed about the difficulties uh, and the complexity of uh, digital transformation. And that was the motivation for me uh, to write it down and create, let's say, um, a pragmatic way of looking at this perceived uh, complexity. Yeah. And I think when you look at the, the picture, you see there are four main areas relevant um, in digital transformation. Yeah. The, the first is you have uh, the customer part or the market to see what has changed, uh, how com uh, the customer gets access to your company, uh, what are his concerns, his needs, uh, how he co you communicate with him. This is, this is one uh, part. The second part is your enterprise. That's the cultural change I mentioned uh, before. I think you have to become aware of that the way you manage your company will be affected by digital transformation in terms of organizational structures, the way you work, uh, the way you have to lead uh, as company owner uh, your company. Uh, you need to get used to play in a game uh, which rules you maybe do not know yourself all. And the last bit of enterprise is, um, uh, especially in our regions, you need, uh, you need to develop a complete new culture of failure, how we manage failure. And <coughs> this is the strategic uh, part. Once you have noticed what has changed, what you could do different, you will start trying uh, first... Uh, things out, call them prototype, for example. Yeah. And then you get affected in this, what I, what I call OPIT. Yeah. OPIT is the shortcut for organization, processes, information, and technology. Yeah. You will then take your existing process, change it uh, as you did it for any other project. And the last bit is the business model. And I would like here to uh, insist a little bit more you read in the newspapers all the time, company needs to start with a digital business model and then start doing things. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, I, I'm really convinced about exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. The reason why, it's quite easy. 80% of companies which are now in the market have a business model and make money out of it. Yeah. They don't need a new business model. They need the following thing, make the existing happening to make money. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they follow the new developments, make first experiences, and then ask themselves the question, in what way this new idea, this new product, this new service may or may not affect my business model, and then do the necessary changes. So I do it more uh, at the end. Uh, only if you start with a new company from scratch, then it's clear. Business model is, uh, is at the beginning. And I think when you look at this, this framework, you, you, you will notice that it's quite pragmatic, easy to understand, and uh, give you a kind of orientation where I'm now or which area I'm focusing on for the moment. Mm -hmm. So that's the model. Where, where would be the best place to start then? So this is also the question I'm asked uh, very often. And yeah. it's, uh, sorry for this <laughs> answer, it's, it's different. Yeah. You cannot say you have to start on the left 
uh, corner and move to the right one. Mm -hmm. That's for each company uh, different. What I uh, propose to, to companies is to do to start with two uh, steps. First, this permanent observation of marketing and the ecosystem around to see what is new, what has changed, what may be important for my business or not. This is one activity. And the second is to find out what kind of digital maturity level I, I have as as company. Do I have uh, the, the right basis? Do I have the skills? Do I, what do I need to do uh, to, to, to be able to start this kind of initiative? This is the area where I would uh, start. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, and uh, for different places, different companies, are there different company maturity levels? That's clear that digital transformation is not a project with a an start and an end date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a journey with, which started years ago and which will last. And that's why I think there are also uh, different levels of maturity a company uh, may, may reach. Uh, the first is, when you look at the picture, is it's the, f the, the, the level where you are learning, as I mentioned before, learning about the, mar the market, about the technology, about uh, customers, etc. Yeah. Then it's a second level uh, of maturity is when you start creating out of these first learnings IDs, then make the, these ideas happen, creating uh, prototypes, learning out from it, making mistakes, starting again, uh, transforming then first or yeah, areas of your enterprise. And at the end, that's the kind of heaven of digital transformation, I would say, is when a company is at a stage in which uh, in permanent innovation is part of the DNA of the, of the company. But this is a journey which will last uh, a certain time. Some companies are, are already at a, a level where they have the basis and started to do first experiences. Meanwhile, others are at the very beginning. And that's important to find out a little bit uh, where you are uh, today and then start investing accordingly. Perfect. Well, Rene, thank you very much thank for you. that. I look forward to speaking to you again. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you like this and would like to see all of our interviews with Rene, head over to ducoscopy.tv.